you know, we often discuss the continuous growth of our local ecosystem and how more and more uh, starts to resemble other European hubs, such as London or Berlin. Um, so here to give us her invaluable perspective on Sofia as the next Berlin is Janet Todorova, co-director of the Founder Institute in Berlin, an entrepreneurship organization with presence in more than 100 countries around the world. So everyone, just give a big round of applause to Janet. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for spending the time on Thursday afternoon to be here and to listen to me. And of course, to all the other awesome speakers today. So um, I would like... Okay, I think it's working. So today I would like to uh, share with you some of my experience from the startup ecosystem in Sofia, but also from the startup ecosystem in Berlin. And I've learned so many things that uh, eventually I came up with three simple solutions. How can we scale Sofia to become a global startup scene? So first, oops. Um, it's not working very well, but I think we can manage. Yeah, okay, great. So about me, oh, Stefan already introduced me that I'm one of the co-directors of the Founder Institute in Berlin. But uh, what's more, I recently joined Honeypot. You already met Kaya. This is one very cool Berlin startup, and I'm super happy to be part of the team. And during the rest of the time, my hobby is to build bridges between Berlin and Sofia, so I really would like to encourage collaboration between those two ecosystems. So let's start with some definitions first. This is something that I came up with after reading so many other authors talking about ecosystems. So this is my understanding of what is a startup ecosystem, and I think it's always all about the people. So in a functioning uh, and successful startup scene, you have those five actors um, really active and con collaborating between each other. So entrepreneurs are in the heart of every ecosystem. But then you also have investors and corporations, universities and the government, of course. So let's look into all those actors and what are they, uh, they're doing in an ecosystem. So of course, entrepreneurs are the core. Everything starts with them. Um, but entrepreneurs are not only the people who are coming up with cool ideas, then trying new stuff, building prototypes, making mistakes, starting all over. Actually, entrepreneurs are also those guys that are organizing events like this, guys that are opening co-working spaces, guys that are nurturing, nurturing and building the community. And also one special superpower that those entrepreneurs need to have is the ability to attract talent. So all international startup ecosystems that are really successful are successful mainly because they are huge attractors of talent. So Berlin, uh, totally international. English is already the official language. Think about also Silicon Valley. Those places are full of people from all, all, all around the world. So I think one of the criteria to scale a startup scene is to attract not only talents from around the country, but also from around the region and other continents even. So then when you have uh, entrepreneurs building ideas and scaling step by step, at a certain point you need investors. This is the, the only solution to scale on an international level. So of course investors could be accelerators and um, of course VCs, but also <laughs> The first uh, investors usually are the triple F, so friends, family, and fools. <laughs> so we really, really, really have to appreciate those guys as well. So uh, the most important thing that those um, actors are doing, uh, they're bringing up the unicorns, basically. So it's a talent to, um, to identify potential success stories at a very early stage. But also another huge responsibility that investors have is actually to build a bridge to the next round because you, it's, not, it's never over with just one round. And you, usually in cases with small ecosystems like Sofia, the next round is somewhere abroad. So we already have examples from our ecosystem, uh, startups having uh, uh, Series A rounds in Berlin. 
and I'm really happy that our local investors are building those relationships. So in uh, regarding this, I think Sophie is doing really well. Then um, the other three actors, uh, they're becoming really, really active and uh, present when an ecosystem is getting more and more developed. So I think we can get some insights from Berlin regarding how um, corporations, universities and government can contribute to the ecosystem. So of course corporations can uh, sponsor events and uh, provide free beers every evening for our tech meters and so on, but it's not all about free beer. So there are two ways for corporations to engage with startups. One way is to share technologies, data and um, own know-hows and then um, enable startups um, to use that technology and knowledge to, um, to monetize these assets in another way. But also another way to engage with corporations is uh, the so-called corporate incubator. So you, you get inside a, a corporate, corporate incubator, you get a, a round of funding initially, for example, in 25, 30K, and then reaching up to 300K. So in this case, corporations are using the agility and uh, flexibility of startups to enter new markets. So for example, in Berlin, all of the big companies like Deutsche Telekom, Deutsche Bahn, Deutsche Bank, <laughs> Uh, all of them, yeah, of oh, Metro, all of them are, uh, are building uh, inc uh, incubators in-house to try to uh, get advantage of the startup culture and, get, uh, and enter new markets. So how about universities? Uh, universities are the main source of talent. So talent is really crucial to the startup scene. Um, and I think we are having pretty good universities here in Sofia. What I would like to emphasize on, we need more programs in English. So this would be the next step to attract talents from other countries. Because uh, this is actually a soft way to enter an e ecosystem. This is what I did in Berlin. I just went there to study a master and then step by step go in, got involved with the ecosystem. So if we want to attract more, more people to Sofia, then we should definitely think of um, cool IT programs in the technical university and also in the Sofia University, but most importantly, in English. And another uh, important responsibility that universities have to take is also to build incubators. So imagine if you're a first grader in your bachelor's uh, and you're introduced with the concept of building startups. I think. Uh, if I had this opportunity now, I would be, I don't know, having <laughs> several exits behind me. So, but we can do this for the other guys that are coming. Last but not least, government. Uh, this is a very controversial actor, not only in Bulgaria, in every startup ecosystem. But I think um, at least this is what some, some local entrepreneurs shared with me about Sophie is that actually we're happy here that government is not interfering a lot. So we're having um, super high speed internet and you're doing business in, in the way that you want. So there are not so many regulations, taxes are really low. So I think we're quite lucky here. But another important role that the, the government has is also to, to create city branding. So for example, one huge success for Berlin was um, the ex-mayor, huh, I remember the surname, Wolverite, something like that, yeah. <laughs> so basically, he maybe accidentally or maybe not slipped in an interview uh, the slogan for Berlin, poor but sexy, but since then it became so popular and actually the motto of all entrepreneurs coming to Berlin because it's an affordable location to start your company compared, let's say, to London or Silicon Valley and other uh, attractive places. So this is something that we can definitely learn from Berlin. So how can Sofia scale to become a global international uh, startup scene? I think copying is definitely not a strategy. We <laughs> Yeah, we already know that uh, this doesn't work. It's always a different culture, different mentality. Many startup ecosystems are trying to follow the steps of Silicon Valley and so on, but so far not successful. 
I think that the idea here is to find a niche and focus on that. Um, so from, from my point of view, I think we should focus on collaboration and then the niche that w w uh, is our strength will eventually come up after collaborating. So now I would like to share my three simple ideas. How can we scale? So first of all, um, I think our ecosystem needs more visibility. And I can give you an example. Uh, when I started uh, working with the Founder Institute, and I was talking to our uh, regional success manager who is responsible for all chapters in Europe, and I told him, look, Ben, we need to start this Founder Institute thing also in Sofia. The startup ecosystem is ready over there. We should definitely do that. And then he said, OK, let me do a short research and I'll get back to you. And in a few days, we spoke again and he said, are you sure there is an ecosystem over there? And I was super surprised that he said that. But eventually I realized because he said, I checked on Meetup, there are no Meetups. I checked uh, public Facebook groups like Bulgarian startups or Sofia startups or whatever. And he said, I didn't see anything. How, where is this community that you're talking about? And I suddenly realized that we're such a uh, good uh, connected community between each other. So we are only using our private networks to share news about events and to uh, spread the startup mentality. Like sharing with your Facebook friends, I think it's not visible to the world. So again, we should think of those talents that are opening the map of the world and are saying, OK, where do I start next? I want to find an interesting location. And for example, we can target all those people who are going to Bali or other um, exotic location just to bootstrap a startup on a, a lower price. Sophia can definitely um, fit <laughs> into their budget for sure. So uh, one thing is we have to make our ecosystem visible. So when he said that, I started the group Sophia Startup Events. It already have it already has around 700 members, but. Just to give you an impression, there is a group, Berlin Startup Events, and it almost has 20,000 people inside. So I think you can uh, compare the scale that we, are, we need to reach. Another thing is English. Most of our websites of the people who are doing awesome things here, uh, startup courses, uh, entrepreneurial academies, and so on, we need to transition from Bulgarian to English as well. Of course, I love our language and so on, but we have to be international if we want to attract talent. Next, talent, of course. This is a very um, a discussed topic because, uh, as we all know, uh, in the last 20-something years, or even more, let me just have a second. Um, most of our brains are just running away and contributing to other ecosystems, other cities, and uh, basically the local economy is somehow suffering. But I think that nowadays mobility um, is reaching a next level. So when you move to another city, you're not no longer um, huh, no longer meant to be there forever. You can always move. And there are so many people who are living between uh, different locations. So I think this brain drain that we were suffering can actually become a brain gain. So all those people who have experience abroad and they have learned from other people's mistakes and they've learned the ropes of how to build a successful startup, they can come back here and uh, just share the experience and, and, and instead of just starting from scratch. And I would encourage everyone who is here to do that as well. Just one year is absolutely enough to gain this uh, valuable experience and come back. And there are so many ways to do that. By working in startups or just go abroad and study. There are so many entrepreneurial programs that are sponsored by European Union and so on. So there are so many ways to do that. But I think that bringing our talents outside will also um, build a better network to bring more talents inside. So we shouldn't underestimate that as well. Last but not least, uh, this is my third idea. I think it's not that simple, but um, yeah, let's try to do that. Uh, I would like to do a small, exp small experiment. So I'm going to read a list of names 
And please raise your hand if you know those people, some of them or all of them. And then I will, I will explain what is my third solution. So, Enchu Mishinev, Daniela Tanasov, Ralica Dražanova, Tina Vodimirova, Ivan Alexander Mavrov, Borislav Antonov, Kirill Bangachev, Christo Venev, no hands, Christian Cyklev, Ivo Dilov, Viktor Terziev, Ivan Stoyanov, Violeta Najdanova, Denica Markova, Alexander Tenev, Zdravko Ivanov. Okay, do you know who are those people? Who? Who is this person? <laughs> okay, Chris, do you know? You mentioned something? Ah, okay. <laughs> Who? No, I didn't mention him. <laughs> okay, let me tell you what's my point then. <laughs> so actually, these are just a few of the names of the Bulgarian kids between age 14 and 18 who won over the last five years 636 gold, silver and bronze medals uh, in uh, the world's most prestigious competitions in astronomy, informatics, mathematics and physics. And I think uh, the, next goal <laughs> the next goal for our ecosystem is actually to think long term and to reach out to those kids because those are the, the guys who are going to build the next unicorns. I don't think it's going to be me. <laughs> my, my, my time is already... Uh, Chris. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking like. If you look at the Silicon Valley statistics, most of the successful founders are between 22 and 25. So um, I think we should give it a try and try to reach out to those young people. So I would like to finish with my call to action. I can distribute this list and the names are endless. Uh, maybe we can just reach out, each one of us, to one kid and say, okay, let me tell you about entrepreneurship. Let me tell you about startups. Would you like to try and build something together? So, thank you very much. And <laughs> just one last thing. I want my round of applause, though. <laughs> uh, uh, in, at 5.20, together with Kaya, we are hosting a workshop in the hall over there. And we're collecting questions basically from people who are trying to uh, build companies. The topic is transitioning from developer to founder. Uh, I already spoke with Mignef. I know that there are founders here. So please, guys, join us. Uh, and I would really like to have a you know, friendly discussion with you. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Janet. Um, because we're still trying to find our next speaker, I think that uh, we could utilize the time to uh, to see if we can. <coughs> I'm sorry, get some questions and uh, sure. and answers. Um, is that, does anyone have a question to Janet? There is one gentleman right there, and let's get a microphone to him. Or you can speak out loud. <laughs> okay, I, I think I can speak loud enough. Uh, I really love your ideas about the uh, how the um, whole infrastructure should look about the startups, but um, I want to refer you back to what I think Tom said, uh, that uh, we should think about the people who are not here. And uh, I'll A lot of the players uh, that you mentioned on your uh, startup map uh, are not here. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but mm. do we have people from the government? Do we have people from the universities? Do we have kids here? No. And uh, my question to you is, how do you think we should get those people here? Uh, so there is a different strategy for each of those target groups. So it's a kids, complex question. Yeah. <laughs> so th kids, like for example, uh, usually when, a, you, when you read those articles with the medals I collected the information from, usually you know this kid is from the Sofia Mathematical High School and this kid is from the Yambu Mathematical High School. So already reaching out to those schools, it's an easy way to do that. And I know that guys uh, from the uh, ecosystem are already doing that. I think Svetlin Nakov maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, for, this would be the strategy for kids. Of course, why not organize a hackathon for kids and then get you know grown-ups playing with tools with kids. There was this very cool initiative a few years ago, playing with robots uh, and then kids and grown-ups 
playing together with those Arduino, you know, gadgets. <laughs> uh, okay, so the other, the government. Government is a really uh, l not so flexible actor, let's say. So I think, um, yeah, one way to approach that is uh, there. Uh, I've seen on the municipality website of Sofia, there are those projects that uh, you can apply to do something regarding developing the, the brand of Sofia or Sofia Smart City and so on. Uh, somebody has to put the effort to go through all those red tape bureaucratical stuff and maybe try to enter uh, that way. Uh, corporations. I think uh, one good way to reach corporations is actually to send our talents abroad. Like, for example, if we manage to bring um, interesting companies here, because we have all the, the necessary environment, like we have 10% corporate tax rate, the fastest internet connection, and so on. I mean, um, look at Dublin. We, uh, at the moment that they reduce their uh, inc uh, the corporate tax to 12%, and then suddenly Google, Facebook, and so on came to that place. Of course, English was a deal breaker, but I mean, we can already manage that. Is it my turn yet? Uh, still? <laughs> um, just give another big round of applause to Jeanette. Woo! Yay! <laughs> okay.